So uh, my personal history with EdTech uh, kind of goes back to 1990, uh, end of 1990, beginning of 1991. I was um, in a service called Prodigy, which was an early online service. And they had chat rooms in there. People were arguing about things like that, much like they do nowadays. It hasn't gotten necessarily any worse. It's just scaled to a lot more people. They were arguing all kinds of topics and someone in there was arguing against using technology in education. And so I remember getting in uh, one of my earliest online arguments with someone over whether we should use technology in education or not, which is really kind of the wrong question. That's that's another topic for another day. So I graduated high school in 91 and started really using Prodigy and other Internet services, AOL, when it came along. That was uh, where my screen name of Grande Ped came from, which is another story, it was from the AOL days. It was, uh, I used those to look up things, do research for classes and stuff like that through college, which I graduated in 1997. Yes, I realized that means I took a few extra years to get through. I had to work several jobs to get through college. So it took me a little bit longer, but through college, I kept using the technology to research and learn on my own in an informal way. And so I'm growing this vision for, yes, I could use technology or use uh, more specifically the internet uh, for education. And I even applied for and was accepted for in 1997, a master's program in educational technology. But I looked at the program and it was more based on distance learning as it looked at that point, which was uh, remote camp, you know, remote television services and uh, mail outs and those kind of things, using technology through a closed circuit system, those kind of things. And I wasn't really interested in that. I was interested in more in the online factor. So I actually started the first day, looked at the curriculum for all of it, and then just dropped out at that point, which uh, made a lot of people upset. But so I started looking at, through for my own path through how to figure out how learning could work online started you know, digging through more of how educational technology works in the online realm. And then about uh, 2000, when 2000, I started teaching uh, eighth grade science at a public school in Texas. And I started building a website in HTML in the year 2000, end of 2000, to help my students who were, the, we had a large migrant uh, student population there. And so they would often, once they came back in, they would sit in a computer lab for a while trying to catch up, but they didn't have much to do. So I created a website for them that had lists of all the stuff that we had done in the past so they could catch up in my science class. That took me a while to get through, but I eventually got it online in 2001 and went through a few revisions. And uh, I still have the last version of it from 2002 up on my website. If you dig around, you can see <laughs> some of my bad attempts at eighth grade science humor. And I kept exploring this idea of online learning. I eventually went to work for an educational publishing company and pushed them to try and put more of their content online. I even took an old, I took the open source program called PHPBB, which was a discussion forum. I started kind of pulling the code apart and making a rudimentary LMS out of that for their content. And uh, that company went under, uh, not because of me, but because of a lot of other factors. And so, uh, I started working on a master's degree in educational technology through the University of Texas at Brownsville because I liked their program because of the practicality, practical aspect of it, but also the way that they were focusing online. And so that's when I started actually learning about instructional design, learning about how to effectively teach things online. I also uh, found a job at the University of Texas at Arlington working in online education. First student support, then I quickly moved to instructional design, did that for several years. Graduated from master's program, at UT Brownsville, started teaching a little bit in their program and continued working at UTA and kind of creating this group, uh, uh, kind of my own personal learning network to learn about these things. Uh, and that was what really helped me grow the most in educational technology is connecting with people locally and around the world who are also doing the same thing and then uh, figuring, learning from them some of the things on how to do uh, effective learning online. Some of them were uh, some colleagues of mine at the University of Texas at Dallas. We actually uh, created a website uh, called edugeekjournal.com. It was actually a group blog at first. There have been up to you know, seven or eight other bloggers on there. I'm the only one still active, but any of them are welcome to come back whenever they want to. They just don't. But we still talk from time to time and we you know, tweet, tweet each other and you know, get on Facebook together. And the thing is that this is a group where I really explore things like social media. Uh, Second Life. We used to go into Second Life together and, and kind of mess with people's uh, Second Life islands, and that was kind of fun. But people quickly learned to put the security whenever we came around. 
Uh, we also got into social networking. That was, you know, we were we would interact on MySpace back when that was a thing, and then Facebook when it came around. We were all in on this thing called Jaiku when it first came out. We thought it was so much cooler than Twitter, and then it died. And then, of course, remember when Twitter was first started by this podcast company called Odeo at the time? That company's now gone. Twitter's still around. Out of all the ones that could have stuck, that's when we got. Oh, well. But so we started working with that. And, that, and then connecting with those people. And then uh, also people through Twitter that I just met through Twitter or through Facebook as far as uh, experts in the field. Uh, so I came across people like George Siemens uh, and a lot of the other people, Mahabali and other people people who have greatly influenced my uh, work through the years, uh, as well as people that I work with, like Harriet Watkins and Justin Dellinger and uh, all the other people that I've worked with at UTA that have helped me learn a lot of things. So it's, it's definitely something that we do, that we learn through as a group. And then, uh, of course, I went and got my PhD at the University of North Texas and started working at the Link Research Lab, more on the research side of instructional design. And that's how I got today. That's kind of been my journey.